Hey, NASCAR fans, Steve Letard here from NBC Sports to talk about what else? Some gaming, gambling, fantasy live, finish line, so many options to decide how your driver is going to run and to challenge your friends. And to help me go through the lineup at Race 3 and Auto Club Raceway this weekend is our gambling and betting expert from the Action Network, PJ Walsh. PJ, that's a big title, man. I hope you can live up to that. I'll do my best, Steve. <laughs> so as I mentioned, third race of the year this year out at Fontana Auto Club Speedway, two miles, old pavement, uh, those, those pesky paving seams, a bumpy racetrack. It's going to be interesting to see how this race runs, whether it's going to be a pack style race, whether the pack will spread out. But either way, you're going to have to pick some favorites. And my favorites, when I look ahead, regardless of what you're playing, whether you're gambling, whether you're playing Fantasy Live or the Finish Line app, I like all three Penske drivers. Their numbers at the two-mile raceway are very impressive. You start with Ryan Blaney. Three straight top tens, a fifth last year. So fast at Las Vegas, the race that got away in, in you know, pit decision late. I expect Blaney to run well. His teammate, Joey Logano, last week's winner, five straight top seven finishes. That's the consistency I'm looking for. And Brad Kozlowski, who perhaps I think is going to be the weakest of the three until he can prove to work with his new crew chief, he still has three straight top four finishes out at Auto Club. So, PJ, regardless, my three favorites are the three Penske drivers. What does the uh, odds makers say? What are the favorites at Auto Club? Yeah, the odds makers have Harvick at four to one, uh, Kyle Busch at five to one, and Logano at six to one. So you got one Penske driver in there. One Penske driver. It's surprising. We've seen a lot of three to twos, three to one. So the favorite is only four to one. What does that tell you about their opinions when it comes to odds? They don't really have one. <laughs> Remember last week when we did when we shot this video, it was after practice, so we had some sort of idea of who was fast. Right now, they're just kind of throwing everything to the wolves and let the better uh, better shape the market. Uh, the better shape the market is never right. uh, never a good thing. I've learned in the past. Yeah. I always like it when the experts tell me. So let's talk about it. Those are my three favorites. You've told us about Vegas's favorites. How about your favorite bets? Who stands out odds wide leading into the weekend that you think are good return on your investment? I hate to agree with you, but you kind of nailed it with Ryan Blaney. I've made one bet, and it's the Latart special. Blaney at 16-1. to 1. I liked all your stats, but what I really like about him is last year, there's a stat called green flag latent speed run, or um, I'm sorry, green flag speed latent run. It's the final 25 laps of a green flag run. He was third. That's pretty fast for 16 to 1. Well, it's pretty fast for 16 to 1 at a track that I think that is, has huge value. The tire fall off will be real. The cars will slide around. I think the cars will spread out. And what I expect to see is pack racing for 5 to 10 laps and then the best handling cars move forward. So if that speed continues from 2019 into 2020, 16 to 1 might be a great bet. Well, those are some options if you want to bet your hard-earned money, but there's a lot of different ways to play the game when it comes to NASCAR. And one way I love to play is NASCAR Fantasy Live. So when I look at my lineup, remember, i got to have five drivers and a garage driver. No surprise, I'm going to have all three Penske drivers in my NASCAR Fantasy Live lineup. Uh, the reasons are obvious. Their numbers, Blaney, Logano, Brad. Not only do they have good numbers, consistent numbers, but they were good last week. And I think early in the season, you're going to see some carryover from week one to week two. I got some other names here, though. This one I'm a little nervous about, Kyle Busch. I didn't see much out of the Toyotas at Las Vegas, which surprised me, but he is just too strong at Fontana to leave it off the lineup. He scored points in every stage. So as a Fantasy Live player, I need points. He has never missed stage points at Fontana, and he's won three of the last six, so I'm going to go all in on Kyle Busch. And the one Toyota that did run well at Las Vegas, Martin Truex Jr., the 2018 winner, uh, finished eighth last year. But that was with damage. So those are my five drivers, three Fords, two Toyotas. How about your uh, fantasy lineup? Who are you liking for your five drivers? I got to get back on the Chastain train. Wow. Ten starts. He's in the sixth car. You got to use him when he's in the, uh, in the good equipment. And I have a confession. I really love Tyler Reddick this week. I really do. So I want to see your reaction on that, Steve. But... I actually started calling him Kyle Larson 2.0 last year. And it's not necessarily because of the talent. It's just he runs well at the same tracks. So when they're big and they're fast and they're slick, think Homestead. Think when there's tire fall off, he can run the wall. I really think Reddick's going to run well. And in a format like we said with Chastain, when you can only use a driver 10 times, you're really racing against their performance throughout the season as opposed to the other drivers you can pick. So I really think that uh, Auto Club, Homestead, and Atlanta coming up, those are really good spots to use Reddick. So I don't doubt Reddick's speed at Auto Club. What I doubt is the length of the race. I think Tyler Reddick will score stage points, but I have to see him put together a cups-length race 
before I can really bet on him. Uh, so I'm avoiding Reddick. But you bring Reddick up, interestingly enough, I had no Chevrolets in my top five, even after a good run in Las Vegas. So I do have a couple Chevrolets I'm debating on when it comes to my garage driver, and it is Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson. Kyle Larson, because his auto club numbers are outstanding. Jimmy Johnson, because he's Jimmy Johnson. And what I saw <laughs> last week was back in the top five, back in the top ten, running up front. Maybe it's the new Chevrolet. Maybe it's Hendrick Motorsports. Maybe it's the racing god saying he deserves to run well in his last season. I don't know. Maybe I'm just emotional. I'm considering Jimmy Johnson for the garage. Am I crazy? I think you're a little crazy. <laughs> I think you're a little crazy. If I had to go Chevy, I would take Chase Elliott. People forget he ran the most fast laps last week. Probably had the best car especially long, on long runs, and now with tire wear. He's really good about getting the feel of the car right, so it may not show up in practice, but late in the run, Chase could be the fastest car. So one reason I'm staying away from Chase is actually only a usage issue. I agree Chase is going to run well, but I'm trying to save him for the middle of the year. Well, all right, if you don't want to put your money down in Vegas and you don't want to play NASCAR Fantasy Live, or maybe like me, you're going to play NASCAR Fantasy Live and... The new Finish Line app. NASCAR has put out as an app. Go download it. Finish Line. You pick a driver out of each group. There are six groups. You score points. Pick the race winner. You score more points. If you could somehow do that better than everyone else, there's cash to win. It's a blast. I have a great time. So, PJ, let's jump right in. Group one, I think, is going to be the toughest pick of all six groups, and mm -hmm. here's why. This is a heavyweight fight on a heavyweight fight on a heavyweight fight. It has every driver in here that I think could win this race, minus Ryan Blaney. It's Kyle Busch, Truex, Logano, Brad, Larson, Harvick. It is a stacked lineup. I hate to say this. Vegas odds, finish line pick, they line up for me. I'm taking Kevin Harvick out of group one. Yeah, I'm with you. When all's even, take the race favorite. He's four to one. No reason not to take him. Fords looked good last week. Harvick looked good last week. I like that pick. Mm -hmm. Group two, uh, you have some big names in here. You have Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin. I think it comes down between two drivers. It's between Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott. Blaney was too good last week, coming off disappointment. I'm taking Ryan Blaney in group two. I'm actually taking Chase Elliott for the reasons I talked about before. I'm betting Blaney because he's 16-1, to 1, but taking Chase here because he's 8-1. to 1. He ran the most fast laps last week. I can't ignore that, so give me Chase in group two. That's one guy I beat in my finish line app. I don't have to worry about <laughs> PJ. I'm taking Blaney. That's where we're going to dif differ. All right, group three. The, you know, I've actually seen as these groups get farther back, it's a tougher pick. Maybe you're not talking about the race winner. It's who can outrun who. Who can be a better guy? So you have people like William Byron, his teammate, Alex Bowman. Um, you see Eric Amarola in this group, Eric Jones in this group. I am taking, of all people, William Byron. A couple reasons. I continue to see improvement out of the 24. His Fontana numbers are not good. Throw them away. His learning curve is steep. He's better every year he goes there. And let's not forget the man on the pit box. I'll give you one little hint. Where did he win his first race with Jimmy Johnson? None other than Auto Club Speedway. Maybe he can rework the magic, get William Byron in victory lane. I'm going to agree with you again. I have to, I have to go with Willie B. He's 20 to 1. He has the best odds in that group. And he ran the second most fast laps last week, which is, it was kind of quiet. You know, it was Bowman. It was Harvick. It was Elliott. But Byron on the long runs was coming, so I think, once again, with the worn-out asphalt, he's going to move around. He'll be a really fast race car this week. He had a fast race car at Las Vegas. Unfortunately, he got a little bit of what I like to call the cup-level lesson in that final restart. Didn't do anything wrong. It was just taken advantage of by his competitors. We see it all the time. All right, Group 4 <laughs> is fascinating because it has Xfinity's big three from a year ago in this group. Will one of the rookies be leading the group? You were bullish on Reddick, so does that mean you're taking Reddick in Group 4? I am. This is the one spot where I'm going against the odds. De Benedetto is actually 80 to 1, and he has the best odds of the group, but I prefer or confess my love for Tyler Reddick. And since you don't like him, I'm going to push him even more. I'm taking actually Ricky Stenhouse in this group. I think this is going to be a blue collar group. I think it's going to come down to restarts, good decisions, that long run you talk about. I don't expect any of these drivers in group four to run in the top five. The track is too tough, the field is too deep. But Ricky Stenhouse is going to continue the momentum at JTG, his new ride. It's a Chevrolet. I liked the Chevys last week. I'm going with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Group 4. All right, Group 5 and Group 6, these become very difficult for me. <laughs> group 5, I'm taking Ryan Priest, uh, Stenhouse's teammate. I think when I look at Group 5 drivers, that's the group that he's going to stand out in. A group 6, for me, Bubba Wallace jumps off the page. I think he's going to run hopefully just inside the top 25, maybe just inside the top 20. You never know. He's coming off a great run at Las Vegas. Maybe he'll carry the momentum on Auto Club. Yeah, I took Ty in Group 5. A lot of these drivers have the same odds. They're all long shots. And uh, he had the best driver rating of the group at Vegas, so I took him and agree on Bubba. 
you know, sometimes you just got to make a pick and went with Bubba. Yeah, sometimes it is a gut pick. And mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the win, I'm sticking with my group one winner. I'm taking Kevin Harvick because I think to win all the money, you're going to have to get the winner right and group one. So I can't split up. I'm assuming you're doing the same since you took Harvick in the first group. Yeah, it's early, early in the season. We have no data. We have no practice. We have no qualifying. Take the favorite. Yeah, go with the favorite. And I think to win the money on finish line, you have to get both of them right. And it's a blast to play. Go download the app, finish line app by NASCAR, pick a driver in six groups, score some points, win some cash. Well, there's PJ and my opinion on who's going to run well out at Auto Club, the third race of the season for the Cup Series.